Hi guys, Arthur here from Homeowner DIY. In this video, I'm going to install an undermount kitchen sink. Now, this is the same kitchen that I framed the half wall for the laundry, and I stubbed out lines for the kitchen. By the end of this video, you're going to see what uh, thinking a couple steps ahead and planning out your job looks like. Everything is going to work out really well here. It's going to be a nice clean look as well. So what we'll do now is we'll look at our setup with the cabinets in. Alright, so this is the cutout for the kitchen sink. Now one thing to keep in mind is uh, this countertop has been specifically cut out for the kitchen sink that I'm going to install. You can't just take any sink and then install it as an undermount because this cutout here is not going to line up. But this is what we have to work with. So what we'll do now is material and tools. All right, this is our materials list. So I have a single compartment uh, stainless steel kitchen sink. This is an undermount. I have my cup drain, inch and a half brass tailpiece. A nuts uh, plastic washer. These two things I had to buy separately for uh, my cup drain, inch and a half slip adapter, inch and a half union trap, inch and a half pipe, ABS glue, half inch steel strap, pl uh, plumber's putty, number eight by one inch screws, and then clear silicone. This is what I need for this job. So what we'll do now is the tools list. All right, this is the tools list. So I have blocks and a automotive jack. Hacksaw, silicone gun, cordless kit, I only need the impact most likely. And then I have my pouch, so hand tool. So measuring tape, level, tin snips, anything else I might need. Guys, this is our tools list, so let's get started. All right, guys, so this is the DIY version. This is my version of using tools I already have to raise in undermount sink. So I've got two 6x6 six six blocks. I have a 2x8 block, I have an automotive jack, and then I have a 2x4 that is going to span the pressure from the jack across the sink itself. Alright, so I'm going to grab the sink and now I'm going to slide it underneath onto the jack. Alright, so what needs to happen now is I need to put a bead of silicone all the way around the sink and then I'm going to use the jack here to lift the sink into position. Alright, so I put the bead of silicone all the way around so what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise up the sink using the jack. All right, so feel on the edges to make sure that the sink is lined up so it's the same all the way around. Once that's done, wipe off the silicone all the way around. All right, guys, so I'm here back the next day. So the silicone has had all night to dry. Uh, if you can't spare a night, you're doing this for somebody else, uh, give this five or six hours, find something to do. But this is the thing that you do not want to rush. But with the silicone dry, or at least it's dry enough, I can remove the jack. And that is going to leave the sink up in place now. So we'll loosen this off. And now the sink is being held in place by the silicone. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the jack out and then we are going to look at uh, strapping the sink in place. So guys, this is one of the key things with an undermount sink. You can't install it like this without any straps because especially with a kitchen, you're going to have dirty dishes, water. Over time, the silicone is not going to be able to bear the weight. So strapping is essential. And at least here in Canada, if you don't strap your sink up, you will fail in construction. 
All right, so when it comes to strapping the sink, you see there's plywood in the back there, but there's no plywood up front here. So you can either go to the plywood in the back, or in this case, I'm gonna have to go into the, uh, the side here. But when you strap your sink up, you need to make sure that it's nice and tight. Like I said, uh, there's going to be weight in this sink, and over time, if you don't strap it tightly, or if you don't strap it at all, it's gonna wanna pull away. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to show you my method for strapping up undermount sinks. I've never had a problem uh, with my approach here. Okay, so I'm gonna strap it back here, and then I'm gonna have a strap here, and that will uh, cradle the sink here up to the, uh, the bottom of the countertop. All right, so to strap up our sink, I have my half inch all round. Uh, that's what this uh, steel strap is actually called. It's called all round. I prefer half inch because the, the holes are all the same all the way through. You can get three quarter all round, but it has a big hole, small hole, and I have ran into issues when I needed the other size hole. It wasn't there and it makes it more difficult to strap your sink up tightly and neatly at the same time, but I've got my one inch number eight screw and this is the way I do this. So when I do this, I will put the screw in about halfway and then I'll go to the other side. The reason I don't go in all the way right away is because you need to make sure that you have a lot of tension on the strap to keep the sink up. So that's about halfway there. All right, so I have my strap. Pull the strap tight because it's steel, so it's not all that flexible. And I'm gonna use this hole here. This one up here is going to be too short, and this one down here is going to be too long. Okay, so I've got about halfway there. I'm gonna go back to the other side, tighten it up a little bit more. And then come back to this side and tighten it up a little bit more. And that is now nice and tight. All right, so this is our cup drain, also known as a basket strainer. So the designs are all Pretty much the same. So this one has a nut down here. Sometimes you have a bigger nut. But the idea here is that you take the drain, you put this inside the sink, and then you put this underneath. And then when you tighten the nut up, that's going to push this and suck this down. Now, this one here, I actually got off of um, another kitchen sink. So some do have a, uh, a rubber O-ring, a rubber gasket, or you can also put in putty. I mean, I think this gasket looks okay, but uh, I'm going to use putty just because I don't know how old the gasket is and I'm not in the mood to come back and and fix it if I need to. So we'll take our putty. Roll it into a nice long line. So something like that should be okay. There is a such thing as going too, too thick on this. And then what I like to do is push it on. All right, so with this all now pushed on, this is going to distribute the putty evenly. If you put too much, you're gonna have a gap 
between the sink and, and the rim here. And what can happen is over time, the putty can start to get washed out. Now, this one does not have a symbol. If you do have a symbol, I would say put it at the very top or at the bottom and make sure everything is centered so it looks better. So we'll put the cup drain in. All right, so we'll put the cup in from the bottom like this and then put the nut on. So now put your hand on the inside of the cup drain inside the sink and turn the nut until it's about hand tight. So this is hand tight now. We'll take our channel locks and we're going to tighten it up. Also make sure that the cup drain is centered in, in the sink, which I will show you in a minute. Now this cup drain is not brand new. I pulled it off another kitchen sink. When stuff gets older, it tends to break more easy. So in this case, I'm going easy on it. But if it was brand new, you can be fairly aggressive. But as a rule of thumb, I'm trying not to be aggressive with stuff that is old. All right, so make sure that the cup drain is centered all the way around. If you have to, you can always... Uh, hit the cup drain from the bottom. Now the putty will squeeze out. This is not an issue. You see it squeezing out here. Let it squeeze out on its own. At the very end, uh, before I test, I will I'll clean out the, uh, the putty, but this should be fine. So what I'm gonna do now is put on the tail piece and work on the drain. All right, so this is my inch and a half brass tail piece. So this is an inch and a half nut the nut goes on the bottom so we see it like this and now we have a plastic ring so the protruding part goes inside so it'll look like that and now just screw the nut on to the bottom of the threaded portion of the cup drain so that is fine right there and guys remember the gasket is only plastic, so you don't have to be aggressive with this. So this is hand tight. And that is probably fine right there. All right, so now I need to uh, figure out the drainage aspect of this. So putting the trap on like this, I mean, it looks like it works out very well. I like to say it's skilled, but it's probably just a fluke. But I'm going to show you an easy way to figure out uh, the way that I do this. All right, so we have our inch and a half slip adapter. So that is this dry fit on. And then put the slip adapter onto the tail piece. So plastic, the, the bevel side goes down. Put this on, tighten it, and now we have a mock-up. Okay, so what we can do is take our trap, we can put it on, and now you can swing the trap or the slip adapter, and then you can also turn the 90 to line it up. Now, like I said, in my case here, I think this works out basically perfectly, but if you're coming off from a different area, this is the way I would do it. Line your pipes up and then take your measurement. All right, so we have our tailpiece here. It is four inches long, so I generally like to split the difference. So at four inches, have the top here at two inches, take my measurement, four and a quarter. All right, so I have my piece here. I'm going to take off the trap. Now this, uh, Lines up really well, so I don't really need to do anything. So I always, for these union traps, I take them apart. Guys, I have talked about this on, on other videos, but if you put a ton of glue here, it can drip down and then glue your trap together. And that will destroy the seat here. You take their trap apart the first time, and it's no good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue the, uh, the 90 on. So when I glue my 90 on, I always level it as well. 
And this is one of the places where you want to be sparing with the glue. You don't want to glue it so much that you have glue going down your 90. But I'm also going to show you in just a second how I address that issue as well. All right, so the 90 is level. And then this is what I do. I take my finger and I always just stick it in and then wipe. If there's anything flowing down, you'll wipe it and it'll be gone and then you won't have an issue. But be sparing here on this joint because you don't want glue going down, gluing your trap together. I've seen this many times. I've done it myself. The first time was also the last time I've ever done it. So we'll now glue our piece on. So before putting on the trap, get this out of, out of the way and, and toss it off to the side like that. Otherwise it's gonna get caught on the trap arm here and then you're not gonna be able to pull the wand all the way out. And now the trap can be put on. So for both of these, hand tight is all you need. So just before testing, now we have some putty that is squeezed out. Alright, so I'm going to test. So I threw my bucket underneath. The stops are already open, so the first thing to do is Turn on the faucet and allow a trickle of water to go down. Alright, so we'll throw our stopper in. And allow the sink to fill, uh, I'd say halfway should be a nice solid test for a sink like this. All right, so the sink is roughly half full. Now this took me about eight minutes to fill to this point. So keep in mind the weight of the water in the sink. And this is why strapping tightly is so incredibly important. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna uh, test the drain. This is the proper way to test a sink because you need to have a huge volume of water to put pressure everywhere. If you just send a trickle down the drain, you're not gonna get a proper test. Okay, so it's dripping from this nut, so more than likely it just needs to be tightened up. All right, so this is our finished product. Everything is done now. I had uh, a leak here uh, multiple times. So I just put Teflon tape on it. I will link into the description how I fixed it for you guys. But everything looks good now. I tested this another few times. Uh, I'm happy with this. Everything is functional. You can see that the wand hose is not catching on anything. I'm happy with this. It looks good. So what we'll do now is no review this job. Alright guys, so that concludes this job. So everything went really smoothly here. So there are two things that you need to make sure that uh, you get right the first time. First of all, the, the sink needs to be raised and it needs to be held tightly to the bottom of the countertop. I, I use a jack in this case and it works really well for, for this type of application. The other thing is that the sink needs to be strapped in tightly. There will be weight in this sink and the silicone over time, it's not going to be able to bear the weight. You might get a year or something like that out of it. But if you don't strap it up properly, you will run into problems. And I've had this happen on, on construction sites where the sink basically fell out because it wasn't strapped in properly. The time on this job. The time was about two and a half hours. 
I would say the single biggest thing is uh, leave the sink overnight to set so the silicone which will also act as an adhesive it'll hold the sink in place if you try to strap it up right away then the sink is going to move back and forth if you can if you can't leave it all night uh, give it five or six hours and then come back I'm not a fan of this but sometimes that is the route you're going to have to have to go with the cost of this job the cost was about $230. So the sink itself was $140 and then the cup drain, ABS, strap and everything else, that would be the remainder. Now you can get sinks that are five or $600, it's up to you, but it's going to be the same fundamental process to install an undermount sink, whether it's a kitchen or a bath sink. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. I hope something here is going to help you on your project when you need to go ahead and do that. Guys, till next time, please hit the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next project.